What's up? It's the Warrior of Hype, and it's time for the Rebirth theme song trailer breakdown. Zack takes a hit to the shoulder guard, about to take a bullet to the head. I wonder if that was the killing shot. Zack is well aware of his impossible survival and aware that something is off. I'm feeling every single bullet. The way he says this makes me wonder if he's like telling a story. Again, perhaps to Biggs. Anyway, started blasting. I'm feeling every single bullet. Is Bugenhagen blind? The cloudy white eyes may be cataracts. This wasn't mentioned in the original game. The vision lost may not be total, which would explain the help of the glasses to see. Their ire manifests once more. Bugenhagen is referring to the Gi tribe in the cave of the Gi here. Like ghosts from the train graveyard, the ghosts of the Gi, like stagnant air, are vengeful spirits unwilling to dissolve into the life stream. This is possibly Gi Natak forming. Notice the spine and the feather silhouettes on the left are similar to the features we see on the boss in the original game. We get our first glimpse of the blue ball that Bugenhagen floats on. Benur juice and Loveless posters in the same scene. Just pointing that out. Looks like this is during the Junon Parade minigame and the seventh infantry trooper scores are on the bottom right. Could be how well you are leading them. We're on the cargo ship. Although it may not be just a cargo ship by the looks of it. Kinda looks like a cruise. Complete with a midship market. I'm sure it doubles as cargo, but I'm looking at the people on board in casual laid back clothing. We see sailors in their suits, but Cloud is just walking around without a disguise. Wait, why? I hope that this is just an opportunity to flesh out the sequence more. Maybe they need to find disguises after the suspicious stowaway is spotted aboard the ship. Looking forward to this moment and I hope it's done justice. Now that we have everyday citizens on board just trying to have a fun getaway. Oh man, that massacre is going to be even more intense. It's going to hit even harder. It's the gold saucer lobby, baby. Madam M is seen on the right. We have also seen Andrea here as well. That just leaves Chocobo Sam of the Wall Market Trio. I wonder if he's in the Chocobo Square. I bet these kiosks are mini games just waiting to be played. The Chocobos are doing the walk dance. Sometimes I don't even know who I am. I forget things everyone else remembers just fine and know things I've got no right knowing. Cloud is opening up and that is very interesting. Tifa saying it's okay, it's my turn to save you is a bit earlier than the original where she helps piece his subconscious together in the livestream post Northern Crater. And Cloud just usually keeps that persona going. He doesn't open up like this. But I've had this feeling for a very long time now that the mystery of Cloud's identity is far from the biggest mystery in Final Fantasy VII Remake's trilogy. And the livestream sequence will be reserved for the reveal of the greater mystery like Sephiroth's Endgame, Zack, the world's merging and stuff like that. The first time I saw the Mithril Golem, I had suspected we would see more golems of each type. And here we are seeing the earth element of Golem. So this guy's name in the original was Coates or Cotes, now revealed to be known as Solomon Gus. This is probably him picking who will go up for the Chocobo races, and he says Cloud is the man to do it. When fate sets us a challenge, we must rise to meet it. That's gonna be an important thing, isn't it? I think the whole gold saucer sequence will be altered quite significantly like Wall Market was, but I'm wondering what's going on here. This doesn't seem to be the battle arena. Kate Sith isn't running from getting arrested. He's shoutcasting the match. Shoutcasting. Oh man. Are they gonna wrestle? Eric, is there anything I can do for you? I wanna help. This is super out of character for Sid, right? He wasn't so willing to help in the original. He's speaking directly to Aerith, which is also odd. This is me trying to spin this into something that's more Sid-like, but what if he's 
kind of swindling the party. Maybe they have something that he wants or needs, and he's trying to sweet talk his way into getting it. Like the keys to the high wind or something. <laughs> Maybe they have tea. Phoenix away. This looks like the Junon area, but up top the cliffs, likely where the mountain chocobo tracks lead up to. And the Phoenix Summon Materia seems to be obtained relatively early in the game based on the party's HP. Notice how Bahamut Arisen actually closely resembles Phoenix. It makes sense. The Phoenix is known for the power of rebirth. And this Bahamut is Bahamut Arisen. So not Neo Bahamut. Let's think about that. Bahamut is around for everything. What is the significance of Bahamut? Neo means new. Zero could be in relation to, like, the origin point. Fury from Crisis Core could be the wrath of the gods for humanity killing the planet, starting around that time where Shinra was on the rise. Sin could be what came after as humanity and even the party is atoning for their sins. Arisen is reflective of not only the title of Rebirth, but also due to a universe being reborn. Bahamut was also a whisper. It has been theorized that Marlene is a Cetra. When Aerith whispered to her in the remake, she immediately calmed down and went with Aerith. This is a plot thread that will need to be explained. I think this is an explanation right here. Marlene knows of the merging worlds, knows of Zack and Biggs, avoiding their fate, she may also know that Aerith will die in her world and be reborn in this one. At least that's what Osby Tomlin and DJ Chamber from our comment section says. I'm working on a full breakdown for that theme song, but that's going to be in another video. Right now I'm looking at the visual details. Is Jesse alive? Well, no. No, it's through VR technology that we see projections of her performances from back in the day. But man, this is such a beautiful cutscene. The choreography is top notch. The animation, my god, this is so good. Aerith crashing into Cloud's embrace seems to be from fear, but then a smile when they look at each other. I bet this is in the haunted hotel room at the Gold Saucer before the date. Or, or it could be after. <laughs> Our first look at the fireworks on the gondola ride date. God, this attachment to Aerith is really strengthening, isn't it? And that's the point. Director Naoki Hamaguchi has stated that Rebirth is all about strengthening the bonds between the party and it is shining in the gold saucer right there. Look at this party coming together, going on dates, dancing. Oh, man. Speaking of the dancing, it's taking place right there in the main lobby, as you can see the giant mogul behind the girls and the sign that says Battle Square. Sid runs a shuttle service out of various abandoned airstrips. After Cloud and the company flag him down, he flies them around the globe in his beloved tiny Bronco. The party is not taking off from Rocket Town. In fact, I'd wager that the party never ventures beyond Mount Nebel to Rocket Town. And if he's flying them around the globe, well, it isn't shot down and traveling by river. So that is very, very interesting. We're going to fly around in a functioning tiny Bronco. And we might not even see Rocket Town. Could that be saved for part three? It also makes sense why the Materia Keeper was moved to be a boss fight with Sephiroth in the Nibelheim flashback at the beginning of the game because we're not going to go through Mount Nebel. Yo, I don't think Dine's gonna go through with it. I pointed this out in my thoughts on the ESRB description in that podcast I did with Tyler Hepner, but nowhere does it mention suicide. On or off screen. And that, I feel like, is a aspect of a video game that needs to be in a ESRB description. 
I think Barrett talks him out of it. Aerith praying, whispers surrounding, black feathers falling. The camera shoots up before the logo hits. I wonder, to the point of Barrett changing Dine's fate, if throughout the game, each character's fate is changed from the original. So, when we get to the moment with Aerith in the Forgotten Capital, we're expecting change, but maybe it won't. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care now. Bye bye then.